My Ian Bean's Shot Mum is a set of Second World War rules for fighting platoon size actions. It was originally written by the Two Fat Lardies in 2011, and it's a fast play game where a lot of the rules can actually be held in your head as you play. I'm going to make a series of videos how to play, each will look at the different aspects of the main rules in some detail. I do recommend however buying a copy of the rules, as this series is not going to include everything in them. In this first video I'm going to give you a brief introduction to the game, and I'm also going to look at the cards and the blinds. So the game is played with miniatures, these can be any size, but the rules recommend those between 10 and 20 mil, these ones in particular are 15. However, 6 mil figures will suit the ground scale perfectly. The game is generally played on a 6x4 foot table and uses 12 or more 6 sided dice, a 10 sided dice and a deviation dice. This has arrows drawn on 4 sides and 2 sides that are marked with hit. This is used for artillery, but we're going to cover that in a later video. You'll also need a tape measure marked in inches for measuring distances during the game. As this is a company based game, you will need figures to represent that. Individual soldiers are not particularly important except for big men, we're going to cover those later. And the smallest unit in manoeuvre is the section or squad. This is usually between 8 and 12 men who will operate together depending on the historical orders of battle. These can be based anywhere you like, but I usually put 2 or 3 figures onto a single base for just the ease of movement and cohesion. You may want a few single figures for casualties and the like. Also represented are weapons teams. The smallest are generally the two man anti tank teams, light mortars, flamethrowers, light machine guns. This also includes tripod mounted machine guns with crews of five and also anti tank guns. The sections and weapon teams are then grouped into platoons. Most Second World War platoons were either three or four sections with support from mortars, anti tank teams, and other additions. The historical platoon organisations are covered in many of the supplements for the game at the Two Fat Lardies website. I'll put the links to this in the video description. Armoured fighting vehicles and I ain't been shot mum are considered to be individual units, but they generally operate as part of a larger organisation. They will operate as part of the parent platoon or troop and are activated as part of the parent activation. These are the basic organisation aspects of the game and your forces will be built around one or more platoons of infantry with support from armoured fighting vehicles commanded by individual big men. Larger artillery pieces are generally not represented on table, unless they are part of an objective or some other circumstance. Most artillery fire is conducted off table. One thing to note is that there are no point system in Iron Bean Shot Mum. Your units are drawn from historical orders of battle, and sometimes the game may be unbalanced because of this. However, this represents the Second World War very well. Not at one point did two sides in a battle have the exact same number pitted against one another. Balance is struck between the player's forces, either by the generic scenario generator, or specific force lists, which will detail what additional support and options you have for your basic company. To play I Ain't Been Shot Mum, you not only need your two opposing forces, but you also need a deck of cards. These are specific to I Ain't Been Shot Mum and can be found on the Lardy's website, or other places across the web, where some people have made their own versions. You could use a normal deck of cards, replacing the face value with the I Ain't Been Shot Mum specific values, but I think it's better to have the cards designed for the game. Each game is based on a unique deck, and the cards are drawn to indicate which of your units can be activated that turn. This is a representation of the friction in war, both sides not knowing exactly what is coming next. The card activation replaces the older I Go, You Go system that is found in a lot of war games, and it also makes for a much more dynamic game in my opinion. In every game there are always some cards that are included. For instance, the opposing blind cards, one card for each platoon on either side, a card for each anti-tank gun, one card for each big man in the game, along with any support cards such as artillery, forward observers. You also include in the deck a tea break card. The deck will begin, usually, just with the opposing side's blind cards and one or two tea break cards. As each unit is revealed through spotting and added to the tabletop, their cards are also added to the deck when the tea break card is pulled. But what does the tea break card represent? In some ways this is the most important card in the deck as it ends the turn. If players wish they can add two tea breaks to the deck and only end the turn when both have been redrawn. This reduces the friction a little. The tea break represents a lull in fighting, it's a time to regroup and to plot your next move. During a tea break all the cards in play are then gathered up, this includes any new cards for units deployed in this turn and also removing cards for units that are no longer available, such as a player deploying all his blinds or if units have been destroyed or run off the table for example. This new deck is then shuffled. There are a few more actions that occur during the tea break as well, I'll go into those in some detail later. 
Units that have not had a chance to activate can fire at spotted enemies. Some units that have suffered pins and suppression will reduce, but we'll look at firing pins and suppression in more detail. For the rest of this video, let's take a closer look at the blinds. In the game, blinds represent soldiers taking cover behind terrain features or moving carefully to avoid detection. They are the enemy forces which are not yet identified. Usually, at the beginning of the game, your forces will be represented by blinds. The blinds are made up of cards 6.5 inches by 4 inches inside and indicate the approximate area of each platoon or a smaller sized unit. So a typical company may have 3 or 4 blinds to represent each platoon and the supporting arms. You can write on the bottom of each of the blinds which of your units it represents. I've laminated my blinds for this purpose and I use a dry white pen to write on them. This information is kept secret from your opponents, who will not know if they are facing a troop of tanks, a platoon of infantry or anything else. At the start of the turn the first card is drawn from the deck and when your blinds card is pulled you get a chance to activate all, some or none of your blinds. Once the player has activated their blinds they want another card is pulled and acted on. Remember the tea break card ends the turn, which may mean that a player doesn't get to activate their blinds this turn. This could be a breakdown in communications, a failure to react to enemy movements or a whole host of other issues that affect the battlefield. When the blinds are activated, they are able to perform a number of actions during that activation. Sections and weapons teams that are deployed on the battlefield will have a number of actions depending on the quality of troop and the number of men remaining. On average, this is three actions, but can be as high as four. The number of actions will reduce as the casualties mount, however. Blinds represent fresh troops and men who can be considered to do as they are told, as they are not under fire. Therefore, each blind gets four actions during their activation. Despite this, blinds are actually restricted in what actions they can perform in a turn. They can either only move, or spot, or a combination of the two. Blinds cannot fire, but neither can they be fired on. If a blind moves, it rolls one dice per action it is using to move. The result is the amount of inches the blind may move across the battlefield. Normally, moving through terrain can affect soldiers' movement, but because soldiers on blinds can be relied on to do as they are ordered, they can reduce this penalty. We'll look more at movement in the next video. Blinds can also use their actions to attempt to spot the opposition's blinds. We're going to look at spotting as well in the future, but it is suffice to say here that if a blind is spotted, then the unit it represents is placed on the tabletop. Blinds can use their four actions in any way they wish, so a blind may move twice, then attempt to spot, then move again for example. However, if a blind has not used any actions, the troops it represents may open fire at an enemy target that is deployed on the table. To do this, the blind is replaced by the figures at no cost in actions. These troops will then revert to their normal number of actions for the remainder of the game. Deploying from a blind also occurs if the blind is spotted by the opposition, or if the blind moves into contact with the enemy, intentionally or otherwise. Figures deploying from a blind must be no more than 2 inches away from the area covered by the blind. Also, when a unit is deployed from a blind, you will add its individual unit card to the deck when the tea break is drawn. If a unit is deployed before the tea break card is drawn, they will operate when their blinds card is drawn with their normal number of actions, if this hasn't happened already. Units that deploy on a blind partway through their move, for example if they are automatically spotted, will still operate, but with the number of actions they used as a blind deducted from their normal amount. So if a blind representing a unit that normally has 3 actions, use 3 or 4 actions as a blind, that unit will have no more actions to operate on that turn. A terrain feature is also considered to be a blind if it is able to conceal a unit. A farmhouse, a clump of trees or the like could potentially be a threat, and players need to be aware of this. If a unit is in the terrain feature, it will remain concealed as long as it doesn't move or is spotted. These units positions should be noted by the player controlling them at the start of the game. To further confuse matters, players can also agree to use dummy blinds. These represent no units, but can serve to confuse the enemy to the actual size of your force and what it is they are facing. It may be an idea to get used to the basic rules before adding dummies to your game though. This is a basic use of the blinds in the game I am being shot mum. We will look at the other rules such as moving and spotting in further videos. But for now, thank you for watching, stay tuned and please subscribe for further videos on I Ain't Been Shot Mum.